Hey everybody, it's afternoon and snack time where we give you a short, tasty tidbit to snack on. And this week we're talking about the movie Antique or Antique Bakery as it's sometimes called. So Antique Bakery was based off of a serialized Japanese manga series that was written and illustrated by Fumi Yoshinaga. And the translation is loosely Western Antique Bakery, actually. And it ran from 1999 to 2001. And it's a slice of life of four men who work in a patisserie. So it's been adapted lots of different times. We're going to be talking about the 2008 South Korean live action film. Although this year it's also coming out in a Thailand television series called Baker Boys. Good to know. Yeah, I've watched a few Thai dramas. The production value continues to be like it continues to escalate like they're doing a really great job. So I'm actually I might look into that and watch it. Yeah, I kind of felt like I don't think going into this, like, so full disclosure, I came to this not through manga at all, or like any of the anime versions. I came to this 100% from Kim J. Wook. <laughs> and I, I, and I, approve, I approve of this decision. Yeah, <laughs> we're just going to be honest here. It's, it was Kim J. Wook. Yeah. So I was into Kim J. Wook in Coffee Prince a lot, and I really liked his like whole aesthetic in Coffee Prince. So in trolling around on the internet, I saw Antique and was like you know what he's like giving me some of those coffee prints like long hair be speckled and like the thick black glasses vibes let's do it so that's how we arrived today at our snack so maybe just right out of the gate what are some like general vibes you have about the movie that you'd like to share just in like a short little nugget short little nugget so this was definitely I didn't know what to expect from this I I thought I was going to get a story about a uh, male male romance which there was kind of a little bit there, but I was not expecting a cake feeding, kidnapping murderer plot <laughs> going on as sort of the B story. So that was a surprise to me, but also really interesting because it did keep me hooked trying to figure out what was going on. And I still had some questions at the end. I had a text Leah this morning after I was done watching and be like, wait, did this just happen? <laughs> but for the most part, I, I enjoyed the film. It wasn't what I expected. I liked it. And I loved Kim Jae-wook. 10 out of 10 for Kim Jae-wook in this. So I didn't have any expectations, as in none. I watched it because you guys were like, let's watch Kim Jae-wook. And I'm like, I'm down because he looks really awesome. But I don't know. I had like mixed thoughts about this. I really, really loved the whole idea of this guy who hates cake opening up a bakery to find the guy who fed him cake when he kidnapped him, you know, like 20 years ago. And I thought that was really a cool premise. I didn't necessarily like love the execution just because it verged on silly for me at times. And like normally I actually like really love silly, but I think it just didn't, it, this just didn't always work for me. There were times where I felt like I was watching like a Willy Wonka musical or maybe like Grease, you know, the like beauty school dropout. Like I really felt I was watching beauty school dropout, like musical number. And there were just some scenes that just felt, I, I almost felt like, like if they were like filling time when I really just wanted to focus on like, who's the cake eating murderer and I also would have wanted, I wanted like 100% more supporting cast. Like the ex-boxer who was like yes. going to go blind. And I mean, what? I love that. And then the, the other guy with uh, sunglasses who kept calling the main lead master. I mean, I just adored him and his like little innocent act. And yeah, I would have, I almost wanted more than them. I just, I didn't, I also didn't really love the male lead, like in sort of any way. Kim J. Wook was just amazing. I could have watched him play that role for like five hours. Yeah, I think Kim J. Wook did a really outstanding job. And then I did decide that Yua In, which was, was the retired boxer, even though he looks like 12, he's like, right? okay, I'm done with my career in middle school and it's time for a life <laughs> change. I mean, I think he's like in his very early 20s. But anyway, he is also in Chicago Typewriter, which we keep getting told to watch. Yeah. So that got me more excited to see him because I thought he was amazing. So I came to this knowing very, very little. I definitely knew it was about cake and cute boys. I did not know that there was going to be a crime aspect to this story <laughs> at all. And I did appreciate how it unveiled itself into like that. And, you know, at the beginning, we're told that, you know, the like rich dude bro boy who is um Jin Hyuk who's played by Ju Ji Han who's also in Kingdom right now you know he's going to open up the cake shop telling anybody who cares to listen that it's all so he can meet women which you know I mean like yeah there was a lot of things in it that like I'm like look none of this is stuff I really like like 
you know, I have a problem obviously hearing like a lot of the homophobic language. Some of the premises felt like just a little bit too dude bro. But then like at the same time, I knew the show wasn't trying to depict any of that as good. So I think that's where I could like reconcile some of that. So, I mean, in the end, I felt like it was quite fluffy for being like a book about like PTSD and like trauma. And that's okay. I can live with that. So I do want to just share really quickly. I found a cool little thing online that was from the director, Min Kei Jung, who had like a little statement about why he chose to do Antique. So he said, I'm a huge fan of the original comic book, so much so that I actually put a copy of it in the main character's bag in my previous film, All for Love. What struck me was the fresh idea of an all-male cast with a story about cake, a subject which is usually reserved for women. The way the food mediated the course of events was also fascinating. But above all, I was captivated by these almost living, breathing characters and the reality of their emotion that comes through on the page, despite the comical context and medium. It was a story I had wanted to transfer to the screen for quite some time. I like that. I will say, just kind of going off of what you were saying, Megan, about how it, you know, kind of got a little bit silly at times. I bought into that, I guess. It didn't bother me. It gave me vibes of kind of like Amelie or Moulin Rouge, where it was over the top, meaning to be over the top. It was, I agree, weird to have that over the topness with a kidnapping and murder side plot going on. So that was a little strange for sure. But I still, I I was able to kind of get behind it. And it may also be because I love anytime there's musical numbers in movies. And that could be a whole other podcast because... I know that we don't all feel the same way about people breaking into song and stuff and shows. And <laughs> I actually don't mind musicals. Megan, oh where you, I don't like when like my main hero just bursts into like a croon to the heroine. That's a no for me. But Megan, I'm curious, how do you fall out on song bites, like breaking into song in your shows? Oh, I mean, I love musicals. I don't necessarily, I'm the, I'm actually like you. I don't really love my hero and heroine just to like break out in song, but I, I love musicals, but this felt like, out of place. I said, like, it's weird to have it with, like, a murder subplot. Yeah. Yeah. This is honestly what I kept thinking when I was watching it, or this is how I felt when I got to the end, that I actually would have preferred to see this as, like, a series, even a mini-series. Yep. I really felt like there was a lot of relationships that could have been explored more. Like, uh, the whole plot with Kim J. Wook's character possibly leaving and go- and going to like yeah a new bakery in Paris. I actually kind of liked that, but uh, it felt like it was sort of squeezed into like the main suspense plot. And I guess I would have liked. I think it would have been better to develop his relationship. And I, I don't mean like a like a romantic relationship. I mean even like a friendship. I would have liked to see like his friendship with the main lead develop a little bit more. So the revelation of the whole cake thing, the whole reason that the main lead didn't like cake is because his kidnapper, when he was, I don't know, eight four. or something. He was four. four? Oh, okay. yeah, that four. was a four-year-old? Apparently. Yeah, that was a giant four-year-old. <laughs> I would agree, but I, it, did a, say, it did say he was four. A four-year-old <laughs> actor <laughs> since South Korea. Time. Anyway, so I felt like that revelation almost came too late. Okay, so, like, they have that whole montage where he's dressed up as Santa, which, I mean, he looks straight out of, like, the bad Santa movie, first of all. But he's dressed up as Santa, and he's delivering cakes. And later, it's you, you kind of more understand, oh, he's delivering cakes because he wants to see if he recognizes anyone. Well, I kind of wish that there was, like, a suspense element there. Instead, they made this whole, like, silly montage with him delivering presents as the Santa, and it I just didn't, I don't know. that, And, and that's fine. It's... Again, it was, the choices were fine. It's just that it didn't fully work for me. And maybe that's because I wanted the movie to be something that it wasn't. So maybe that was more of like a personal thing. I just, I really actually loved the cake eating or kidnapper. And I, I guess I would have liked that suspense element to have been developed better. Instead, we learn at the end and then it feels sort of like rushed. Can we, speaking of the cake, cake feeding kidnapper, can we talk for a second about how I... Did not know that that was Kim Chang Wan for a while because <laughs> I, don't, I can't believe you did not. Oh, okay. So first of all, let's also say like like our favorite Ajuma in Healer, Kim Mi Kyung. Now we've got Kim Chang Wan who is in everything that I see, every single um, thing. And I love and I love him and I love him. But I mean, this was 2008 and he looked older than he did in Coffee Prince, which was the year before. <laughs> he looked older than he did in My Love from the Star, which is like 
six years later. So I did not. He looked older than he did in It's Okay to Not Be Okay, which is now. Like, just yes. Jasmine. <laughs> yes. And then the teeth. How do they do with the teeth? Like, can you have, like, two teeth from all that cake? <laughs> I mean, it's the magic of cinema. He played an old crazy dude. You know, I can get with that. But I just love that you didn't notice. Because as soon as we saw him, I'm like, he's in it. Did you catch the villain? The villain from Holo was in it, too, as just kind of like a random, like, cop guy. No, I missed that. And you told me, and I totally missed that. But you know who I did notice is the detective who never found out who kidnapped him was Gong Yu's dad in Coffee Prince. Anyway, yeah, lots of lots of folks in here. I'm curious, like, what would you describe? Because I think, like, what we're saying is, like, we're all picking up on the fact that, like, there were some unexpected choices in this. For me, I definitely felt like it was one movie. And then, like, halfway through, we were in, like, a different movie. Yes. But what kind of genre would you, like, how, what genre would you classify this as? <laughs> See, and that's, I will say, that's what I agree with. I agree with Megan that it should be, it should have been a drama. Because you can fit all of these different genres in a drama. Whereas in a movie, it felt a little bit jumbled. Like, I agree. Like, I liked the song and dance stuff. If we were just going to set this in the bakery and have it be all about the bakery, but to have all the song and dance, like, you know, the weird sort of interludes and then have there be a murder subplot going on was definitely off-putting. So I don't like, I don't know what you would call this because there's very little romance. And that's, I did want more of that. Like I wanted Jin Hyuk and Sun Woo. I wanted to see romance with them, but we didn't. So I don't know. I don't know what I would call it. Like a I really don't. thriller comedy. I don't know either. I, and that's why I was like, but I got to the end and I'm just like, I don't know. Again, I didn't like, I didn't hate it or anything. I just honestly was like, I could have used way more. But yeah, there was like the whole like bakery montage with like a dozen singing women <laughs> See, out okay. of nowhere. So I could have lived with that. And I mean, like I, I can hang with it still, but I think I that like... <laughs> I 100% agree that like it needed to be a drama because, Mm -hmm. and I was like, is this me? Like, that's why I'm interested in hearing both of your takes on this too. Cause I'm like, is this just me now? The fact that like all movies fall somewhat short from, like I've been watching movies now and again, and I'm just having a hard time often with movies. Cause I, a lot of times now I'm like, ah, I'm like into this like multi episode where we deep dive into all these things. So a lot of times movies can feel short. Like I watched Inception and I was like, I feel like I could have had a lot more. Like I finally saw Inception for the first time ever. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, you know, I felt like Inception so and every, yeah, it was so good. And I got it and I was like, look, it's good in a movie, but like it would have been better. And like, a drama, like it would have been better right. if we could have like gone down that rabbit hole. And in this, absolutely. And I feel like I could have even had like that light, fluffy, like silly musical montage with the killer, except for the fact that like, this it was so condensed that you'd have like the big happy number and then they're like oh and we found the child's body like in a <laughs> right. garbage bag like two seconds later <laughs> like i need a little bit more like right the transitions were really abrupt sometimes yeah whiplash. i felt like i got whiplash a couple times where i was like what and i just want to say one thing is that i'm completely turned off from cake like this drama did not make me hungry for cake it was it grossed me out because expect like I love the Xboxers, so don't get me wrong, but every time he would eat, he would just grab like a fistful of cake <laughs> and shove it in his pie hole. And I just <laughs> I can't deal with that. Like no one used utensils in this freaking show or freaking movie. Like use a fork, like a civilized human being, not your whole palm. <laughs> and that's I love that's why because you had said going in I want to talk about why this show didn't make me want cake yeah that's I was like, why because oh, it they fed it to children and murdered them but no because no. they used their no. no not the kid the kid part didn't turn me off it was I know <laughs> not them finding a cherry in a dinner they eat it with a hot tummy like, <laughs> like that's not what turned me off from cake it was watching them eat it like animals that turned me I, off from I cake. think I eat cake like an animal and so <laughs> I can get with that like I don't really love cake but I if I eat cake. I prefer a in hand your, in your palm. Really? <laughs> I've like, never done thing, that. In your never, fingers? It didn't bother me, but I will say I've never freaking done that, nor would I. <laughs> like, are you like a child with their smash cake? Like, <laughs> maybe I mean, smash cake. No, I think, like, <laughs> yeah, I guess in the past I've mounted cake like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's so, not like my go-to. I just honestly, I would not want to eat cake in general. But it I'm is gonna be a like mow down. But, a cake but, if, but if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna go down that road, it's gonna be in the palm of your hand. Like okay, we get cake occasionally. I like carrot cake. This is more than you need oh, to know. So about do me. I. But That's carrot cake. cake if I'm gonna it. have cake. Carrot cake is like the only ca- like chocolate cake actually grosses me out, but carrot cake I really like. So every once in a while we get cake from a local bakery called the Buttery. It's very rare, like once a year, twice a year for like a birthday or something. And I find that if I we get it and it's like a box with the cake in it, yeah, I'll like <laughs> knife off a cut off a slice and like walk around with my coffee eating my cake with my hand. Like, I'm not gonna get a plate no. with like my fork and take like the tiny little like lick bites. Isn't so, it like crumbling all over the floor? Yeah. Yeah. This is why my husband also hates living with me. So <laughs> just like you know and he's like that's why when I'm told I am like living with a frat boy that's probably why because I just walk by with my cake eating it like a 20 year old wrestler or ex-boxer. Yeah, the Xbox. So I was gonna say, so speaking of speaking of cake, and this is something I also had to like text Leah when I finished the movie this morning and ask her, I'm like, so wait, he was kidnapped by a guy who fed him cake, but at the end, he's beating up another kidnapper who feeds kids cake and murders them. And she's like, You are correct. <laughs> There are two- like, I was like, who did he? So who did he beat up at the end? That's like, another. What? That's a. That's a current kidnapper murderer. That's who they're trying to find right now. The guy okay. who kidnapped him was not trying to kill him, but only trying to replace his dead son. Yeah. So his trauma is not the same as the two and almost three dead <laughs> dead kids. That was whoever the little like nightmarish man was who was like, I just wanted to play with them and make them eat the cake and kill them. And then he strangles him. Like, you so know, he has to eat cake too, right? Cause yes. Like, they yes. Cake. So it's two, so there two, two cake. yes. Yeah, yeah. There were two numbers. completely slender. Right. In cake South Korea cake. at this time, there's two. What are the odds? Cake what eating murder. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I mean, go for it, I guess. And that's another thing too. I was like, did I miss something? Like the guy just kidnapped him and made him eat cake for like two months, right? Like that's, that's- he just was try- he just wanted his son, like because he has a dead okay. son. But so here's that- a question that they didn't really answer that I do feel like I need some closure with. We had what's the actor's name again? Who's in everything? Kim Chang Wan. Okay, so we have Kim Chae Wong with his like two snaggle teeth, basically talking to like pretending his son is with him. We have a scene where he's like rabbiting on to his dead son, and his wife is basically like, Look, I've hit the end of my rope with you talking to the dead son. Like, I'm outie. Later, when we find out that he was the kidnapper of, you know, the main character 20 years ago or whatever that was, where was the wife in that? Like she went to her brothers. She said, I'm leaving, I'm going to my brothers. No, but before. Before, when he came oh, when, up to oh, her. Yeah, when he came, oh, that's a good, yeah, good question. 20 years yeah, ago, no. where was she? She was just like, oh, I guess there's another kid here. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I had a big question. Like your husband. Was he in a secret home. room? Right. Or was it like, is, yeah, where was he? I had a lot of questions. Yeah. So there, like, I didn't even think of that. Oh my God. I didn't even think of that. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't hold really, but it would have been better if it was like, I mean, it could have been 12 episodes, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was a lot, and I could have you. And again, Kim Jae Wook was Dynamite. amazing, <laughs> and they called him a, the a gay with demonic charm. And he was even like through the screen was just extremely charming and beautiful. Yeah, I did really appreciate, and I wanted more of when the bodyguard just finally was like, I, "I'm all in." Like, I gotta get with you that night where he like oh, they so go cute. to the gay bar and he like pulls down his like glasses and he's like your eyes are caramel and you just see like the bodyguard's heart be like dum, 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 yeah dum. but then i loved i loved that he wouldn't like when the bodyguard was almost gonna kiss kim jay wook when he thought he was passed out drunk then he's like no 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 i can't take advantage of you yeah and, and then, then kim jay wook and then kim jay wook was like faking it and he sits up he's like no no, no you could take advantage yeah, of yeah, me. yeah yeah no this is like the whole deal this is why you're here yeah. but yeah i kind of felt like yeah, then we like never deal with that like sexual tension again. So I felt like, yeah, there was a lot of will they or won't they, and I'm assuming that the manga doesn't like you know actualize like the main relationship of like you know the pastry chef and like the bakery store owner. But obviously, I think they left it open enough in the movie that you could kind of like insert whatever you wanted to in it. Me, I mean, I like that they had a cool friendship at the end. But yeah. the French guy, I was like get rid of him yeah, why are we still leaving that open my french guy was a dick well, bag we all knew the french guy was a dick bag and then we're like yeah. let's send the young boxer off to like go study with him right 
yay a big party to go off with like, like abusive gross guy. yeah protect my young boxer he was so <laughs> sweet okay speaking of young boxer because i'm looking him up right now so it's you are in you are in is 34 years old now <laughs> 34 years old now which means he was 22 <laughs> right in what was that 2008 am i doing the math right and he was already retired because he was having a, his retina was detaching which is understandable but he was a little baby man like how long was he boxing for that he's already retiring when he is a little baby man yeah, he looked like he was like 14 honestly i yeah. figured oh like oh my gosh i just realized he's the main character in alive hashtag alive yes he's alive he's, yes, he's, yeah. yes he's alive oh my gosh no wonder the whole time i was watching antique i was like why does he look familiar why does he look familiar but in alive he, he's clearly older and he's not as thin because he was like what 22 then and he has his head shaved and the what's left of it is is uh bleached so you know he doesn't look oh my god he was so good and alive like really he was fantastic yeah i think oh, awesome i want to watch it and i'm so glad i made that connection just now i just looked him up and i yeah we, and we have to at some point get to chicago typewriter because i feel like we like weekly somebody contacts us like that's the most underrated like amazing drama ever so agreed I we right. we do we hear about it all the time, but yeah, here he is in antique, and then he was in. You guys would well know it's zombies, so Leah wouldn't. But I might uh, watch live to see him. I liked him. I really liked him, so I would watch for him. Just it, it isn't. It feels like a different type of zombie movie. I will tell you that it didn't. It it. I don't know. I it actually was almost like slow for me as a zombie movie, which means I might like you, it. You might like it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to go off. I just didn't realize it was oh, no. the same guy, and I'm and I'm just like all happy because I really really liked him in Alive, and I was like, I wonder what else this guy is in. This can't be his first role because I really thought he pl- acted by himself most of the movie. So I mean, that's really difficult. I he had to have been experienced. So so I guess yeah. Parting like takeaway. Do you think that folks should check out Antique Bakery? I mean, I'm glad I watched it. It's definitely something that I wouldn't have chosen had I not known who Kim Jae Wook was because I wouldn't have known about this because, like you said, like we kind of looked and like, what else is he in? I enjoyed it. It was definitely very strange. I liked the story, but agree with both of you that I would have liked to have gone deeper into the story and been able to develop all of these relationships more. So if you're looking for something really unique that doesn't maybe get into enough depth, but still has a story that I think kept me riveted for the, you know, almost two hours of the movie, then I would say go for it. Yeah, it was an hour and a half. So we're not even talking like a full two hour movie. And I would say visually, it was really unique. So I did appreciate that. Kim J. Wook is beautiful. I thought the side characters all did have interesting backstories and stories. And again, I did think the premise was kind of cool. So I think it's a cool watch. I just, yeah, again, I kind of wish it was longer. And but I'm glad I watched it. I don't like regret it or anything. Didn't it didn't offend me. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you've seen Coffee Prince and you love like the young Kim J. Wook vibe, yes. And then I think if you're getting into him from like, her private life, which we're going to be deep diving in a couple of weeks. I think it's fun to see that too, because again, he's play he plays very different characters in each of these too. So I think that's also like, it makes mm-hmm. me want to watch more because in Coffee Prince, he's like a little more emo, I would say. Oh, a lot more. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like this, like ethereal kind of like very sweet, open character in Antique Bakery. And then kind of like the king of aloofness, in her private life like but not emo like he was in coffee no no not at all yeah it was a good watch good choice leah thanks for picking yeah i'm glad i saw it i thought it was really interesting yeah and it's on vicky it's a short commitment so so what we have next actually is start a new build your own k-drama game Okay, so last week, well, two weeks, two snacks ago, Amy and Leah gave me some basics of a of a K drama, and I had to write a blurb, which we which we talked about last snack, and we posted on Instagram. And I just have to tell all the listeners that if you read it on Instagram, we had a bunch of comments, and I just want to say it really made me feel good, and I want to say thank you for commenting on it because it was really a lot of fun. So this week, Amy and I are giving the facts of the blurb to Leah, and I think she's going to have a lot of fun too. So, but anyway, so I just want to say if you have been following along, thank you so much because we think this is fun, so we hope you do too. Okay, so I'm going to start. So first of all, I have the hero. So my hero is going to be a psychic with amnesia. (laughs) (laughs) The setting is 
because it's Leah, is Josie and Dynasty, but it can be time travel, okay? My trope is marriage of convenience, and my random fact is that the hero has nightmares that tell the future. Predict the future. Whatever. This is awesome. All right, so the heroine is going to be a gumiho, a nine-tailed fox. Trope is forced proximity. The antagonist, and you can choose gender here if this person even has a gender but the antagonist is a goblin and the random is that the heroine sleeps outside (laughs) (laughs) because she's a fox so the heroine (laughs) sleeps outside like in like a little like dog house you you can decide how she does it you can decide how she does it but she does not sleep indoors gotcha all right this is awesome I am really excited. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that sounds so fun. <laughs> I'm excited too. Yay. And I'm excited for the historical element. So thank you for the nod, Megan. I just felt like I had to give that to you. <sighs> yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, <laughs> so give, them some, give them some parrot, some t- total full bird hats, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's known for having half a macaw on his head. <laughs> So we will not be coming back next Sunday to record because it's Easter. And so we will be sharing the snack the week after that. So it's actually a two week buffer. Sounds like a plan. No problem. What's everyone watching just out of curiosity before we say goodbye? I am all done with my love from the stars. So I have to start a new one and I think I'm going to start suspicious partner. So I'm excited for that. So I finished fight for my way which I totally adored the romance, the chemistry between the two leads was just wonderful. It was just a really well done friends to lovers. I decided to take a short detour and I'm actually watching this like super low angst, really short J drama right now called In-House Marriage, Honey. And next I'm going to start King, the Eternal Monarch. Yay! Mm, I'm yay. so excited. You guys don't understand. Megan has not seen anything with Lee Min Ho yet. So I can't believe you haven't seen anything with I know. How did I I'm so it? excited for this. And I do want to say, like, I didn't say much about my love from the star because we're going to deep dive it, but I will just say that <laughs> I absolutely loved it. So I'm so excited for when we do our deep dive. Good. I'm excited too because I still have to watch it. Yeah, I'm almost done with it. And the heroine, I just love the heroine so much. And then I feel like Kim Soo Yun, he actually gives me not in Woo vibes. That's like, he's got like that like baby man. Yeah, so I feel like Kim Soo Yun, the the reason I say I get the not in Woo vibes is because he's got like, he's very young in this. This came out in like 2013. So he is like early 20s. But I feel like he's playing this character who is like a, like an alien who's like been on earth for 400 years and then has lived a long life, obviously, before that. And he just has so much depth for looking like this little baby man. Like, he starts off fairly stiff, but I feel like as the show keeps going, like, they give him lots to work with. And I feel like he just has, like, layer, like, as you keep going, it's, like, layers upon layers. And so the heroine's super fun and, like, a hot mess and really charming, but he plays it really quiet, and it really does work. So, yeah, we'll talk about the deep dive to that, but, Megan, I'm excited for you to watch it. It feels like watching just, like, a really classic K-drama. Like, I feel like everything, like, even, the like, the original soundtrack, like, the whole thing just feels like this classic k-drama vibe and i do want to say because we haven't said her name yet jun ji hyun is the heroine and i freaking love her i fell in love with her in legend of the blue sea and it was fun to see her play a human (laughs) and see her to i mean because she was great as a mermaid but to see her play a human and get to deal with there's a lot more emotional depth that she gets to work with here because she is a human who has her own emotional boo-boos and stuff like that. And she is one of, I'd say, my favorite actresses right now. She can be absolutely hilarious and also make me cry my eyes out. So yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this one. Ooh, and I think make me this one last excited. thing that I want to say about it, and I regret, I you know I should save it, but I just wanted to say it, is because it's written by the same writer who did Crush Landing, like I feel like her character has like real Siri vibe yes. to it of like kind of like an old, like slightly older, like she's the Nuna, but like this very like, I feel like that there's a lot of like crossovers between those two characters. So Megan, I'm excited for you to see if you think that too. Yeah, I'm excited. I, well, I mean, I, I was excited from the beginning because it's alien. So I'm excited, but yeah, I, I got to start King. So I'm ready for that deep dive. And I'm also, yeah, I'm breaking my Lee Minho seal. 
Oh, I can't wait. My virginity. Of Lee just Mel. know that if you don't love him, I will be shattered. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I'm sure. Um, I mean, that note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like him, but not to where Amy is at. I mean, it's okay. Well, this is the thing. When I first started watching the dramas, I went, I basically went on a Lee Dong Wook like binge. So that, that's the thing. Like, I feel like it depends what you start watching or whatever. Well, Do you know what I'm saying? Who hits you too, right? Like, he, like, I saw, we watched Boys Over Flowers. Well, no, it was King first was the first thing I saw mm-hmm. with him. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't watched him in anything before. What else is he in? And go and watch three in a row with him. So, I mean, yeah. I did the same with Ji Tang Wook because I was like, healer. Oh my God. I loved yeah. it so much. And then, yeah, Suspicious Partner was very cool too. So, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Well, that is it for today then. Thanks for listening, everyone. Annyeong. Samnida. Thank you for listening to Afternoon of Delight. Make sure to subscribe for more great K Romance conversation. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Afternoon of Delight Podcast for more information on our podcast, behind the scenes photos, and of course, pics of our favorite opas and unis. Annyeong!